is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, the Messiah. That's what the angels share. And what we're talking about today, what we're celebrating today, is a birth story. Now, I have another birth story to share. It was a world-changing one. And it happened in, of all places, if you can believe this, Wisconsin. Beautiful, majestic Wisconsin. See, there were some farmers, and the, the woman, she got a call from her daughter-in-law that she was about to have her firstborn son. And that woman happened to be Vera Dornfeld, my grandma. Yeah, 43 years ago. She got the call from my mom. My mom said, Dean's already at work, and I need you to drive me to the hospital. Now, my grandma, just so you know, she's five foot negative three inches. She kept shrinking. And she, if the speed limit was 55, my grandma, I kid you not, would go 32. And if the speed limit was 35, my grandma would go 10. And if the speed limit was 10, my grandma would walk because that was faster. And she would usually be about an inch from the steering wheel, and she'd go slowly there. But not that day. No way. This birth story, this is amazing, because from Marquesan to Wapan, where the, where the hospital was, it typically takes 30 minutes. And my grandma, the 10-mile-per-hour little lady behind the wheel, she got there in about 8 minutes. <laughs> and I'm sure it was just like this. <laughs> And her eyes were wide open, and then she'd ask, Kathy, how are you doing? And my, gra- my mom would say, go faster. <laughs> He's on his way. And sure enough, Daniel Scott Dornfeld was born. Look at him. Look at little Danny. Oh, I know. There's my grandma looking at me. This is the first time they met me, apparently. And there was such joy for the Dornfelds for their only son's firstborn son. And uh, it, it was magical for, for them. I've heard this story. For them, you would think it was world-changing. And maybe in some ways it was. Children have a way of doing that, don't they? Grandchildren have a way of doing that. They change our worlds. Now, I can say the same thing. Here's Savea, our firstborn. When she was, a, this to me is the, is the best picture anyone has ever taken, by the way. And then... And uh, I remember when she was born, she was a month early, and my wife called me and she said, I'm in St. Cloud, they're not letting me go from the hospital, you have to get here. And then she called me about 15 minutes, it's, it's about a 45 minute drive, 15 minutes later, she's like, where are you? I'm like, I'm, uh, I'm on the road, honey. And I got there, and it was amazing to meet her for the first time. And I've told Savea her birth story because it changed our world. And then our second board, Kieran, here he is. Look at how peaceful he is. Yeah, he peed right before that picture. (laughs) Looks so beautiful and angelic. No way. But when Kieran was born, it was amazing. When he came out, his eyes were wide open, as if I'm ready for this, and our world has never been the same. Birth stories have that way of doing it. I'll bet you have yours. I'll bet you've heard it from your parents and your grandparents maybe once or 50 times. And I love to share those. What joy. Good news of great joy. Oh, we have them in our families, don't they? But now let's hear the birth story. Because the angel comes to Mary. The angel comes to the shepherds. And he says, to you is born this day. Those words are so beautiful, aren't they? They're so incredible. They were going to change the world, those words. Now let's look deeper, though, at what's going on. First of all, the angel comes to some shepherds. Now shepherds, just so you're aware, would not be caught dead in Bethlehem. They would not be allowed. So they're living in their flocks. No one else would have them. They're taking care of their sheep. And the angel comes and tells them about this good news of great joy, world-changing news. Not just any baby is going to be born, no, a specific one. One that has been promised for hundreds of years. And now he's come. And now we're told suddenly there was with that angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts. Now this is angels without count. The multitude of hosts means you can't count the number of angels that have come. And what is their focus? 
The angels announce this birth story, the world-changing news of the Savior, and now the others, they can't help themselves. All they're doing is praising God. And what are they saying? Well, the original text, remember, we read it in English. This is a translation of the original Greek, and this can be kind of complex. So I, I, don't know, I don't know a lot of other foreign languages, but here's the best translation that I think we can come up with. <laughs> For those of you who know that I'm a Packer fan, you know how much this hurts me. <laughs> now, I'm not sure, but I, I'm not Norwegian. So when I see this word, I'm like, it starts with an S and it has four letters, and that usually sounds like something I'd step in and smells. I mean, oh, I got some more skull. Oh. They're not throwing me out yet, but give it a chance. I'm just kidding. Actually, skull is this big cheer, isn't it? And all I can say is the essence of what the angels are doing is even better than your biggest cheer, you crazy Viking fans. Live it up. I won't talk about last night, okay? It is a praise. It is glory to God in the highest. And they can't help themselves. These countless angels that are coming to nobodies. And then we translate that, yes, is what they said, but we usually sing it, don't we? This glory to God in the highest. Now, I don't quite know what it was like, what kind of songs and praise was going on. But I tell you, I'm going to show you a video in a few seconds, and this is the best way I can see this glory. Let's, let's watch this. Glory to the noble king, peed down earth to mercy mile, God the ten awake pile, going to come right and why. Don't a cry, on a cry, hit the hell open, came, I did born in bed, the hen, heart the hair rolling, oh team, glory to the newborn king. Yay, good job. Yeah, that was our little girl at four years old. Because why? Because her birth story was so world-changing for me. Hearing her do the same praise the angels did for the world-changing event changes everything. And you can't tell me that that is not the very best praise that I can hear. But if you don't like music at all, maybe you'd like my little girl's dance from just yesterday. Maybe this is how they were doing it for glory. The essence of it is joy, isn't it? Good news of great joy, and all that can happen is praise. But in every birth story, we know this, don't we, as parents? We know that, yes, we look back with joy. We look back with thanksgiving, mostly. But there's the very first feeling that comes, the first emotion. And what is it? Well, the angel actually comes to Mary, and the very first thing the angel talks about is the very first thing that the angel talks about with the shepherds. It's this, and I think it's the one we try to glance off of. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for for see. I don't know about you, but I don't think it was joy that was causing my grandma to go 143 or whatever she was going on those back highways. I know it was not joy that was causing me to go as fast as I could to get to St. Cloud to be with my wife or to get her to St. Cloud when she had our second child. No, what it was was fear. And in the middle of joy, there was that huge emotion. I was scared. I'm sure if you think back on those key birth stories of your life, it's the same way. Will my wife be okay? Is she going to be all right? Will my child, are they going to be healthy? Is everything going to go? Are we going to make it in time and everything's going to be exactly what we hope for? 
You see, the angel comes to Mary, and the first thing isn't good news of great joy, though I think that's what we remember, that's what we cling to during this season. And the very first thing that the angel comes to the shepherds is not just celebrating this glory to God in the highest. No, it is do not be afraid. Because in our birth stories and in our lives, I think fear is there. And I got to tell you, as I look at 2017, I look in my personal life, I look in my, the church life, I look in our world, and there's a lot of things to be joyful about. There's so many things that I can celebrate, but just as easily I can look at those other things and say those things make me afraid. On my news feed that has come across on my phone throughout this year, there's been things like Nazis coming and having torches and saying terrible, hateful things, and I'm afraid. There have been things going on in our world that have caused a lot of, lot of conflict for us. Politics have been a very hard thing for us in our society. And in each of those instances, sometimes I'm joy-filled, and sometimes I'm afraid. And there are other times that I have unsafe things that happen in places like this, like shootings, and I am afraid. And in the middle of that, I can come to the birth story of, that's been shared to me about my life or about my kid's life, and there is some joy. I can change my focus. But you know what's going to replace all of the fear? You know what's going to replace all of the anxiety? It is the birth story of the Savior that was actually life-changing. I wonder... Are these those times that we sing joy to the world and in reality we're anxious and afraid? But it's good news of great joy. And why is that? Because joy came in the form of a baby. God came down to be with you and with me. And because of that, I can say, do not be afraid for see the Savior of the world came and he promised to come back for us. That's what we celebrate today, whether we feel joy or not. We can look at his birth story, then we can point to the cross and we can say, there is joy, especially when I'm afraid. This last week, I had the gift and one of the hardest things to do, which was to say goodbye to my grandma who is one of the most faith-filled, giving, compassionate, amazing people that I've ever known, and she happens to be my grandma. And my brother and I got to do this, this sermon together. It was the most beautiful thing. But my mom and her brothers and sisters were with her at the end, and dementia, well, it had, it had happened very terribly for her. And my mom said at one point, a few days before she passed away, she said, do you know your name? And my grandma looked at her. She didn't, I don't know if she knew my mom's name at the time, but she knew she was her daughter. She smiled and she said, Mama. She saw someone that she loved. She saw someone that maybe she clung to, a birth story that's somewhere there. And she could only define herself by not even knowing her name. Our God came down for you and for me, and he says, I know your name. I will never forget your name. And he says, you have another name. And I think he did, said it the same for my grandma. He said, you are my child. I came to be with you forever. To you, this day is born a Savior. Are you facing health things? To you, this day is born a Savior. Are you having a broken relationship? To you, this day is born a Savior. Are you afraid and anxious because life is not perfect, it's far from it? To you, this day is born a Savior. Amen.